Hi, today we are going to develop a mobile application using Flutter, a calculator application, as you can see here in the screen. For that, uh, we are going to use MobX framework, state management framework. We, the calculator will be divided into two parts. The first part is the formula and the result, and the second part is the buttons. The from and result will be observable variables, so variables that will change. It will change the value and will reflect on the screen. And the bottom part is static, it doesn't change, only triggers some actions. So the 9 will trigger the 9 action to the formula, the equals will trigger the calculation of the formula and show the result. We're going to use mobex.dart dependency. Normally, uh, to sum up how this state management works is you have a set of actions that will change observables, which change some variables, some states, and when the states changes, it will notify whatever plugin, whatever widget that is listened to that change and will react, update the screen. For our case, the numbers will change the formula on the top if i select 7 plus 2 and the whistle will, will react it will react to the screen here and it will change the screen and display 7 plus 2. the same thing when i click equals it will react it will do the calculation and it will notify the widget that is displaying the result to update with the result so this is the basic concept of actions, observables, and reactions. We're going to use that on our Flutter application to separate the UI with the business logic. All the business logic of the calculator, all the calculator, all the actions will be inside of our app state. We're going to call calculator state and the UI, the widget will invoke the interfaces on that state on that class and perform the calculations what you will learn with this complete tutorial in flutter you'll be able to create a full mobile application with flutter from start from the sample app to the end also um, adopting best practice of coding programming uh, organizing the code use dart named constructors and use mobex for state management and at the end we will separate the ui from the application logic so without further ado let's get started We start to create a Flutter project. For that, you run the Flutter create command, create, and we're gonna call mobile calculator. It's creating the application source code. Now we're gonna open this project, mobile calculator, with IntelliJ, and here it is. So we are going to create an application looking like this. So we have buttons here. Next to the zero, we'll have the plus and minus to send the signal of the button and the operations, the delete to remove one character and to clean everything. We're gonna display the formula here and the answer below. Uh, to recap, uh, we're gonna use the MobX state management uh, plugin to store all the state of the calculator and to build actions to build what the calculator should do okay so we're gonna build the ui independently from the business logic okay now we have our application run so it's the sample counter application 
now let's remove everything and create our calculator so first I will delete all these comments we don't need this part I don't need the the, the counter itself the method that will increment the counter these comments will go away as well the up bar we will not need the up bar so I will remove the up bar and this code as well I'll remove this text from the center and the floating action button as well yeah. so we have something like this and we remove the center from the body so okay we keep the body with a column and inside the shield we're gonna create two blocks one for the formula and answer and the second block for the buttons we create an expanded an expanded um, widget and we add as well another one two expanded widgets on the first one I will just put a text let's say I'll put the child center another child and I will put a text formula for example okay so here we have the formula text displayed uh, on the second expanded I will make flex 2 the children I will put another text so to for example no I need to put the child first child and then the text so I'll put a text inside the center child and a text too so we have the text to here and the formula here so we have the elements well positioned I will create my own button okay, to represent all the buttons here in the um, in the grid we have let's say one color two three four so we have four types of colors uh, in the grid in our calculator I will create the button class with four named constructor so all the colors will be predefined and we can use whatever how we want uh, by building the calculator so let's do that I'll go to leap and create a new class a new widget a statelet widget I call it button so button will have a container and the container we have a child and inside the child we put the center and we put a child a text a child again we put a child and we put a text number three for example okay. let's use this button so here instead of text 2 I will use the button uh, 
and I have to import the button package button now run the code we have three here good let's make our button um, styling so let's start to style the button uh, first we're gonna wrap the container with a clip rect to add borders around the container and uh, we're gonna give a color to the container so container color colors dot blue yeah so you see the button occupies all this area and we wrap this wrap with widget and the widget it will be clip air rect with the border radius border border radius circular 20 Uh, we add a padding as well So let's add a padding a Wrap with padding and we give a padding of 8 good So here on the center we have to wrap it with a container so let's wrap this with a container and remove the container from the very top so that's the container that should have the colors colors dot blue and we remove the very top container like this okay so the radius was applied to our button so we have to create a grid uh, pattern in our main file to to order the buttons uh, in in the grid view so let's go to the main here uh, instead of returning a container we're gonna return a grid view for this one so let's put grid view builder we need to provide the grid delegate so we provide the silver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count and I item builder we provide a builder so a build context build context context and uh, the position of the item int index and we provide a callback for that like this so let's see what intelligent as required parameters okay cross axis count so cross axis count how many um, call how many items in one row it will display in this case is four items in the row one two three four it's like four items in a row and he will fill all the grid by four each line okay so good so we have the uh, the item builder we need to provide now the container and the container will be array of buttons we're gonna create an array of buttons and depending on the index he will take the button and return here so let's go to very top before of the scaffold and we create our array so let's create an array array we call it calculator grid and it will be an array of buttons so button 
like this so okay good and here why it doesn't like we need to import the library okay so okay button i will create four buttons for now okay. i need to close the array like this yeah so our my grid i have four buttons on my grid so here on the grid builder i need to provide the size of my array item count i'll put the my array and length of the array so he knows the length of the array and how much i how many items he will occupy per line and here i will return instead of returning a container i'll return my array of the position index now whatever i feel here on my calculator grid i have all the buttons displayed so basically my calculator will be defining this array with the right buttons with the right colors and callbacks action the action that each button will do i will provide in the mobx um, state management library so everything will be centralized all the actions the only thing the button will do is to invoke a specific action so we will have the ui code clean and the ui code uh, independent from the logic of the calculator now for instance if i add more buttons let's say more four he will add up to the to the list okay and then i can change uh, the the button parameters and improve the the button colors let's do that so let's go to the button we have four colors orange red blue and gray let's create that so going to the button first uh, we have to create four um, class instances that is a color is a background color equals like this And then we have a color that is a text color and the tap function so when we tap when we click on the button it should do something so let's create that as well is a final on tap okay. this method this method we are going to provide uh, on the calling UI okay. so I'll put this at the very first beginning I will create a constructor for this one so named constructor let's start with the red and we provide the initialization for the one tap on this this on top okay good so we have our first constructor that is a red named con constructor and the default constructor will be um, will be ignored let's say so let's ignore mutable here good now uh, let's add properties for this construction that is a background color will be colors dot red and a text color will be colors dot white so all the buttons let's say has a white color almost all except this one so I will initialize the text color as white by default and 
the button that needs to override I will override it so like this and here we don't need to initialize okay now I will create the button dot orange and I will initialize I will initialize the Zelda on top and the background color will be orange to orange orange let's make a darker orange deep orange is nice let's create another one button dot blue the same thing initializing the one tap callback like this like this and here the background color is blue blue okay. now we have the gray so I'll copy paste gray colors background gray and the text color is black colors dot black oh, 87 good now we have the four types of buttons uh, declared here and uh, all the buttons receive uh, one tap callback and we're gonna bind the on top to the um, to the gesture detector we need as well to provide the text okay, that we're gonna display on the button so let's create a string text a string label okay. And we receive the label as well here. So let's do this dot label. We put the label as final. We got we don't change the label on top. Let's make other way around. It's better. At first the label and then the callback. Let's copy this, paste it here here and here okay. now what we can do here instead of providing the number we provide the label good so let's see we need to go back to our buttons and improve the buttons so let's go here button so we have four types of button red orange gray and blue the red one receives a label and we call it let's say AC and we need to provide the callback function yeah AC so it's not red why so let's find out why it's not red let's go to the red one background colors blue okay we forgot to assign the color here so let's do that background color and we assign to the button biggie background color we also need to assign to the text the color text so style text style colors color and color text color good yeah now if you do the same thing we add more buttons so for instance blue gray it will add okay 
orange as well here we change to orange it adds all the buttons so we have created the the buttons here the colors of each button and we assign the property for each button and we created a grid that will read from the index uh, of each grid and provides the button here let's now uh, create all the buttons here as we displayed in the grid okay so the first one is ac and then we have delete ac is orange the delete is red delete then we have percentage and divide i will copy here the divide here and percentage so they are all blue 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 so let's see this result yeah okay let's increase a bit the border of this button let's go to the button and let's make 50 for instance okay perfect let's increase a bit the font size so color font size let's make 20 okay let's more 50 no 50 is too much let's make 30 or 25 yeah perfect let's go back to our buttons and um, we create the other row 7 8 9 and x so I'll copy this one so we have gray gray and gray seven eight nine and blue multiplication blue we have x yeah. okay perfect okay we're gonna move this variable to another file to be to be easier okay so let's do that let's create a new file new dot file new dot file and we call it uh, gener grid generator grid g grid generator okay. we move our all code here so our grid remove it from here we add it to the grid generator and we have to import the button import package we have all the buttons imported let's do like this to be easier to to read the file So we have our grid grid calculator and we're gonna invoke it from here so grid is import from generator okay so this calculator grid is being imported with this file okay so now we have our main ui only calling the variable that he needs to generate a grid and that's it and the grid it will be here so it's here we're gonna focus with our grid and we save it nine and then we have four five six four five six minus minus 
and then the last one two three like this one two three and then we have the plus the plus okay. good we have plus and minus first is the blue so blue plus and minus here I copy this character and plus and minus then we have zero and comma as gray zero and comma as gray and then we have the equals as blue equals as blue okay there you go we have our calculator grid ready and then uh, with the colors we can adapt the colors change the colors but at least the layout is there is is good is perfect what we need to do now like each on top we call an action a specific action we were gonna call from the app store okay from the mob eggs app store and there we're gonna save the formula that the user input the result and the rest will be done there okay? the only thing these buttons will do will invoke the appropriate action for instance uh, the numbers will call the same action and the operators is to add to the formula uh, your operation so they all like invoke the same action okay? And the delete will invoke another one, the AC will invoke another one, the comma will invoke a specific action. Is there if there is no comma in the formula or if there is no comma uh, in the number, he will uh, add. Okay. So this one is quite tricky, but we'll leave it to the to the last one. And then the equals will update the result. Okay, we'll calculate the result. Going back to our main, uh, we have a scaffold. Uh, the first container in the column will be the formula and the answer. Now let's create actions for this button. I will create a new Dart file that will be global. And on the pub spec YAML, I will import a dependency for MobX. So like this, uh, on dependencies, I'll put MobX and Flutter MobX. On dev, the automatic code generator and uh, the runner so to generate some code that we need pub get is getting all the dependencies we have all the package downloaded for the mobx now let's create our mobx state management class we create a new class that will be a dart class we call it calc calculator state So I just copy paste the code we need to copy paste part calc state okay. then we create a class that will be a calc state class like this okay. we need to define the abstract class and close it so we have we have our state class ready 
basically I will import this one more bags good to go so let's build this one to generate the, the class for that I will go to the terminal and I will run this one this command now we have the file cock state g generated is empty it's, it's true because our state management main class is empty as well all the logic of the calculator will be inside this class first what we're gonna do is we create two of reservables variable that is the string user input is something that will change and uh, we need to listen for this change and another variable another observable is answer okay like this like this okay uh, for state, we can have two types of uh, observables, uh, variables and computed. Computed that are uh, variables that are computed on the fly. When you access the variable, it will generate his value, like a get, for example. Uh, for example, if you have like a uh, full name computed, it will take from observable name, observable last name, and it will compute. Okay, Whatever one of them changes, the observable for the computer will change but for our case we don't have that we'll have only the actions so let's define actions and the action we're going to define is AC so clean uh, we put it clean only we know okay and the actions will not receive anything the only thing he will do he will do this dot answer this dot input user input this dot user input equals to clean we clean the user input we have to, let's initialize user input as empty okay and let's initialize the answer as empty as well so we have the clean action the clean action will be called when we click on the AC button the Dell action will be called uh, when we click the Dell um, button so let's create a Dell action that will be in Dell delete okay and uh, what the delete will do will do uh, you this dot user input is equals to this dot user input substring substring the start zero and the user input lint minus one so we remove the last character from the user input user input will be override by user input uh, and by removing the last character okay. then uh, we have another action that is uh, adding to user input okay so receiving user input so whatever let's say whatever um, number or or uh, operation you click it will add so let's create an action action and this action will be void void add user input okay. and for this we, we will have we, we will receive uh, basically uh, a string we will receive a string that is an input uh, character okay input car of the method here yes this dot user input equals to this dot user input plus input char 
So the user input will accumulate by adding the input chat. Okay, or we can do uh, we can do like this plus equals. So we'll increase the user input by the input chat. Okay. Let's test that. But first we have to invoke our calculator state to our global global file. Let's define a final calc state final output calculator calculator final calculator equals to calc state. Okay, good. We don't need this anymore. Grid generator. Uh, we keep the grid generator. We need that okay. to to use our calculator state. So for AC, we're gonna def call the calculator. Calculator dot clean. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. So we have the AC button. When we do on tap, we'll invoke the calculator app state and do a clean. And the calculator app state is defined here, is the calc state class that we created here. This class, calc state. Let's add the formula and the result here. Okay, so this text will not be um, the formula, will be the user input. So it will be the calculator, calculator dot user input. Okay. So um, here, let's add a container. Inside the container, uh, we have a child, and inside the child, we're gonna have a column, children, and we define here the children that will have two containers one and another one. So the first part will have two containers and the child of the first one will be a text and will be a formula. So formula and the second one will be a child text result. Okay. Here on the column, we will have the main axis alignment, main axis alignment, space evenly. Yeah, so we have the formula and the result, and we have to align the f the the formula to the left and the result to the right. So for this container, we have alignment, alignment, dot, center left, and the other one will be center right. Now we have our formula and result well displayed. Let's add some padding to the containers itself. 
padding let's say edged edge all let's say 10 or 20 and here as well on the second one Good. Let's increase a bit um, the font size here. Style. Style. Text. Text style. Font size we call 50. No. 25. Okay. Let's make 20. And the other one, the other one as well for the result. Uh, we have uh, so 25, okay, uh, slightly bigger. Okay, so we have the formula and the result. We have to bind the formula and the result to our state, to our user input and answer. Uh, and it will change so we need to wrap with the observable here on the on the widget so he will uh, so it will observe the result let's bind this with our calculator user input and the result will be calculator answer okay now this text uh, is well binded. We don't. It doesn't display anything because it's not doing anything for now. Now, uh, let's see. This container have to rebuild each time the calculator user input changes or the calculator answer changes. So I will copy this. I will wrap it with observer. Observer. The observer receives a builder that will that will will be the shell container that uh, will rebuild each time the observables inside it changes. So builder, builder, and the builder will be the one we have, the container. So now I wrap the container, this top container of the calculator that contains the calculator user input calculator answer with the observer. Each time the user input and answer changes, it will reflect on the screen. For the bottom part, we don't need to do anything because it doesn't have state that changes. So it will only invoke the actions. So the calc grid, the calculator grid will invoke the actions, will not do any change. Okay. So we keep as it is like this and we go to our calculator state, calculator grid, for instance, for seven. I will invoke the calculator. Add user input and is seven. Okay. So the seven button will add the seven to the user input. Let's see. Let's test, so let's rebuild. We need to rebuild our class, our state class. And for that, I will run a command that it will watch and rebuild everything. So it will rebuild our class with all these parameters inside and reflect to the calculator. Good, perfect. Let's run the code. 
uh, we haven't bind yet the click on each button to on top if you go to the button the button is a simple container it doesn't receive click events so what we need to do we need to wrap the padding with a gesture detector so let's wrap the padding with widget gesture detector the gesture detector expects on top on top and we're going to bind the on top with our on top variable okay so we save builds and if we click save and is there is adding the seven to our formula okay so when we click on this button seven uh, here it will call the calculator add the user input seven and it goes to the state add user input and fills this variable in our state and inputs the char okay? and as in our main um, we have this piece of code this widget wrapped around um, observer each time the user input changes it will rebuild the widget and display on the screen so for this we actually separated the UI with the business logic with the logic of the calculator okay the only thing the ui does is calling the specific interfaces of our calculator in this case the user input and answer and this part of the ui that is the buttons we call a specific interfacing of our calculation for example clean our user input let's try the clean it cleans we add the seven cleans now we add the seven and we can delete the seven so the delete is not working why because we didn't bind the delete here so let's bind the delete calculator calculator dot delete okay let's see 777 delete ac uh, okay let's add the eight let's go to the eight uh, calculator add user input 8 let's run the code okay it didn't run anything so I'll stop and run again the code so let's improve the visibility of this code instead of returning the method I'll put the uh, arrow, arrow functions it will be easier to read because we have like one callback only I'll delete everything and add the error the same for the 8 it's more readable like this is easy to read what's going on with our code I will add the same for the 9 for the uh, X is star okay so the multiplication is a star on the on the on inside it nine and four five six so the minus is a minus one two three plus plus three two one so it's clean so as you can see here you can see each action binded for the division is like this and we for the percentage is another another action for the zero is the same it's kind of different action but let's for instance let's do like this and then for the equals is another action Okay, for plus and minus is another action for the comma is another one and we have something like this so let's run the code and see at least if we are able to add numbers to our calculator now let's test the app 7 8 9 good delete is deleting 4 6 so we have all the numbers added 
we are able to delete, we are able to clean, we are able to add good, we are able to add the operations, divide, plus, delete, ok, perfect, clean the screen, delete, and zero, plus, ok, we need, we need to do some fixes, uh, for example, adding some operations, you should not add two in a row, ok, if plus and minus are two in a row, we should not add, but ok, this is another improvement we have to do, ok, good, ok, so whatever the user input, it will calculate the result and display it here, so, uh, let's, got to, uh, let's go to our state, and create a new action that will be void compute result or just result let's say okay. result we have to add another library for that and we go to our pub spec yaml on the dependencies we add math math expressions we do pub get to update perfect now we go to our calculator state on the class we define our parser it's not a observable it's just a simple object we import the package from math expression now we have our object p parser on the result we do parser dot parse and we parse the string that is this dot user this dot user input before that, what we need to do as well is to define the expression. So the expression X will be the parser result. Okay. Then we define the context model. So the context model we put here on the class level, CM context model and we evaluate the expression expression evaluate we type the evaluation type evaluation type real and we part the context model this evaluate will return a double okay. um, and we can print, we can parse it to our string. So our result actually will update the answer. Okay, so we click this dot answer equals to this evaluation dot to string. Okay, it will ev evaluate the expression convert back to string and store it an answer let's rebuild the class and call it on the button good let's go to our grid generator on the equals we invoke the action that is calculator dot result save it, we compile the code 8 plus 2 10 okay. minus 3 7 times 2 4 uh, is uh, 3 times 2 6 so it's 10 minus 6 4, okay. we need to have the parentheses as well so it's good, so we clean, 
1 plus 2 minus 3 is, ne is 0 minus 6 negative 6 minus 6 okay let's delete that negative 6 so it's working so our calculator is working let's remove the debug there on the top let's go to our app here debug checker false perfect we have our app up and running we can just change here the colors of uh, the result let's go to our font size input let's increase the input to 25 and let's increase the result to 30 okay or let's make a better one 40 okay more i think more 60 let's try 60 okay 70 okay good the input let's make something better as well 40 i think 40 is too much 35 okay so minus 9 plus 50 equals 35 delete 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 equals ac okay good that's it we arrived to the end and i hope you liked the tutorial the video uh, if you have any comments write down below to the comments box if you like the video give us a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel and have a look at uh, my previous flutter video i created here on this first video a uh, flutter calculator for mac os is like mac os look like calculator it can run in windows linux or mac but is using basically using the flutter for desktop that video is a very basic video and then have a look at my second playlist the salesforce series that i'm building currently that is a builder series for salesforce have a look thank you for watching see you next time